Hello and namaste everybody. My name is Haza. Today we have a special edition because I would dedicate this video for new students, especially those aspiring to uh, venture into yoga and would love to learn more about yoga from the foundation. Now, to get started, I will probably would introduce you with a few props. It will help you to assist with your practice probably two blocks, yoga blocks. So what I'm using is the foam type. So this is very light and very useful. So we'll make use of it today. And also perhaps some yoga strap. Now I have here a shorter version and a longer version, but for beginners, I would suggest just to get a shorter one. As long as perhaps you have a arm's leg, we'll be fine. So anything about this leg would be great. But alternatively, if you do not have this, you can try and just get into a belt or maybe a towel, um, rope, uh, get creative, okay? So I will also introduce you with a few terminologies and a few Sanskrit words in yoga. And of course, I will try my best to translate it in the Western word as well. So, and of course, the proper technique and how we can safely practice yoga. Are you ready? Here we go. All right, before we always um, start, we will try our best to get into a sitting position. Now, maybe for an experienced practitioner, it's probably easy for them to get into a sukhasana or easy seating pose, like what I'm doing right now. But if this is not accessible to you, or maybe in some students, they will find themselves having their knees uh, lift, lifted like this. You can always, here's the block, and then to support. So you can choose the option if you want to choose the lowest, medium, or the highest. So play around with it. So maybe start with the lowest and just have some support for your knees, all right? So the whole idea in the seated position here just change my angle. So instead of your body curving like this, as you put down the knee, you will feel a bit more comfortable, all right? And if you feel that you're still having this type of body posture, just have your palms maybe on the side or at the back of your hip, and then slowly just try and roll your shoulder, push it, breathe, right? So this is probably easier for you. Alternatively, if you have a pillow or maybe a harder type of a bolster, you can always just put it on the knees, right? So another option um, to sit is what we call like a hero pose. Um, you can put it underneath your hip like this, separating your knees, and then slowly just bend your hip towards your heel and carefully put this one underneath. This is okay as well. So any sitting position that you feel comfortable, right, and stable, that is the correct sitting position for you. Now, I do need to ensure that you are seated in a comfortable position because in pranayama or breath works, when we start the class, I wanna ensure that everybody is calmer and relaxed. So when you are more relaxed, it's easier to get you into the poses especially when it comes to deeper stretches so when your muscle is relaxed things will get easier so it comes back to your breathing every breathing sorry every movement connected with your breathing right so today's breathing what we're going to do is that we're going to practice ujjayi breathing or what we call yogi breathing or victorious breathing all right so the technique is that you breathe through your nose Inhale, and as you exhale, gently just pause, close your lips, and exhale again through your nose. So you will somehow create that sound behind of your throat, like the sound of the waves, the ocean. So it's very calming, right? All right. So probably people will ask, how long, how many breaths, how many pace should I breathe in? So it all depends on you. Maybe start with count of two, and then slowly you develop a stronger 
muscle around your um, diagram, your tummy area, you'll be able to extend the breathing longer. All right? So let's start with Ujjayi breathing. All right? Place yourself. Make sure that your sitting bones are grounded on the floor. Torso lifted. You're lengthening your spine, but at the same time, shoulder is relaxed. So if you feel a bit tense here, just slowly bring it down, right? Touch your, sh your neck and just feel that it's not tense, it's relaxed. Just put maybe your fingers on your jaw to just relax your jaw and maybe smile a little bit, right? So in pranayama, pranayama breathe works. You can have the option to close your eyes. So if you'd like to do so, gently just close your eyes and observe your breathing. We're gonna start inhaling, ujjayi breathing, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Find your own pace and continue with inhalation deeply. As you inhale, just feel your tummy area been expanding as you breathe in through your nose. And carefully as you exhale through your nose as well, you will feel the contraction of your tummy area. relaxation in your breath. Take your time as you inhale deeply through your nose and gently exhale again through your nose while your lips are sealed. We're going to continue breathing in Ujjayi breathing for more minutes. So take your time and your pace. the pace of each breath that you inhale. And carefully as you exhale, take your time. Slowly come back to your normal breathing. And 
if you can try and just maintain that slow, deep, steady breath. If you wish, you can also continue with ujjayi breathing. So we just move the fingertips one by one, getting back to a sense of awareness on where you are. And when you're ready, you can slowly just open your eyes. So that was our first step in yoga practice for today, pranayama, ujjayi breathing, victorious breath, or some people call it yogi breathing. All right, now, warming up with pranayama is one of the steps. The other step is that we're going to warm up from head to toe, okay? So first, we're gonna start by interlacing our fingertips like this. Carefully place it behind your head and then softly just put your chin to your chest keep on breathing here this is a nice stretch for your back of the neck and then always we can need to balance it on the opposite direction so if you can just put your hands into a prayer mudra or what we call Anjali Mudra in Sanskrit. Place it underneath your chin and then slowly chin up. And when you do this also, be careful of uh, the neck compression here or on your cervical spine. So we don't want to do a bit too much here. We need to learn to differentiate limitation from a nice stretch when overstretch, all right? So what we're trying to achieve is just a nice stretch. So. Inhale, lift your chin up, breathe here, relax your shoulder. And release. Now we're gonna do neck stretch on the side. So what I need you to do is just extend your hand, the right hand on this side. Maybe place it, palm, palms facing up, right? And then from here, just bring the other fingertips on the temple, tilting, and then just going opposite direction. So neck stretch like this. So again, do not overstretch. You can carefully just look a gaze upwards. Breathe. Maybe smile a little. <laughs> and just relax. I know sometimes it's easier said than done, but Let's just try, right? Good, and then slowly inhale, release. Okay, extend the other left hand, palms facing up. Bring the other palms, fingertips on the temple of the left hand side, left temple, and pull, tilt, and breathe. And then slowly release and then from here just carefully just bring your fingertips play like a piano so you're playing air piano here all right now a bit of a shoulder stretch okay so what we're going to do just shoulder roll bring your elbows close together but if you're not able to if you find that this is your limit for today then it's fine we're just checking our range of motion here on our shoulder joint right so as you inhale, lift the elbow up and exhale down. So if you feel that you are able to touch your elbows with um, less effort, effortlessly, then do so. But if you feel like you're struggling, do not do that because we definitely do not want to tense our body. So the message that we're trying to send to our body today is relax, okay? So let's do that. And now we're gonna do external rotation. So inhale, lift the elbow and exhale down. All right, we're gonna do a couple of this. Now just a kind reminder, I'm gonna show you on a side view. When you do this, you can do fast, you can do very slow. 
I prefer slow because I feel the engagement of each of the muscle, the tiny muscle. So I like to have that awareness, you know, just have that feeling, enjoying it. So it's all up to you. But my only message is that do not flare your rib cage, bring it to center and you feel that your neck is going forward, bring it back to the mid-center. Okay? So let's just finish up on that. And when you're done, this calf, we inhale, hands up, inhale, lift your hands up and just feel as if on your ribs as if somebody's holding you, rescuing you, lifting at you, lifting you. So you feel your scapula or your shoulder blade is lifting, elevating your shoulder blade. And then slowly as you exhale, bring your hands to the side. So it looks like almost like a cactus. So this is what I call a cactus hand. So every time I give this instruction, cactus hand, so you put it on the side, all right? Does look like a bit of like a cactus maybe, or not. <laughs> it's all up to your imagination, right? So inhale, lift up, and then exhale down. Inhale up, and then slowly exhale down. Good, one more time, inhale up, and exhale down. So next up, what we're going to do is that we're going to try a bit of forward folding from here, okay? So carefully just inhale, still lifting your arms, and as you exhale, carefully take note that your sitting bone should stay grounded on the floor. If you feel this is your limit, it's fine. But remember, we still have our blocks, so we can always just carefully just place it, and then maybe, if you feel this is good, and just hang in here, right? So the idea is that we just want to lengthen our spine at the back, so try to avoid that curve lengthening. So imagine it straight, right? So if I'm here, I'll just remain here, keep it straight, right? And then be careful with your neck as well, no tense, look forward. And if you feel okay, you're fine without the blocks and you can just slowly inhale, take your time as you exhale, bring your fingertips down on the floor and then maybe just walk your fingertips and palms more forward, reaching out and maybe forehead on the ground. And if you feel a bit too tight on your neck, just spread your palms up, apart into a V so you feel more comfortable here. Breathe deeply here, so remember again that ujjayi breathing maybe. And when you're ready, slowly just lift your forehead up, bring the palms, push it on the ground and lift yourself up carefully. All right. Now, a little bit on our wrists join here and our fingertips, knuckles that we need to uh, encourage the synovial fluid so in the future we're able to prevent arthritis, okay? So we're trying to create small movement here. So imagine yourself, um, each part of the joints on the fingertips, you're making a small um, exercise here. I call it clawing. So imagine yourself like a cat, right? <laughs> so just now we're playing the piano, now we're a cat. So a lot of uh, animal association and uh, creativity here <laughs> in yoga, right? Okay, now with your joints, just bring the other uh, fingers and just sort of seal it or secure it like this. Make a fist and then circular motion. So I'm doing external rotation first. Maybe I do five. But if you feel like your wrist joint needs a little bit extra, you feel free to do maybe 10. 15, take your time, right? And then slowly I'm gonna come back and just do internal rotation. And then slowly as I move, having that awareness of each part of the mini muscle join in my wrist, okay? So this time on the other side, balance is the key, right? So take your time. Turn as you go. Great. Okay, so 
neck done, you done on your um, shoulder joint, you done on your wrist. Now, maybe a bit of a lateral stretch, side stretch, okay? Still in the sitting position here, I'm gonna place my right palm down on the side, lift the hand up here, right? Now, I'm gonna slowly just this palm here, I'm gonna push down. So it's creating a lifting effect. So as I lift, I get to lift higher here, right? And as I lift, I'm gonna stretch it to the right side. And as I do this, making sure your sitting bone is still on the ground, you're not lifting it. Breathe here. So be careful with your neck, try and move around, see if it feels comfortable. Good. Slowly inhale, lift, and then we're gonna change position on the other side. Inhale, lift on the other side. Exhale, stretch. So again, you can feel free, move your neck. Always find that opportunity to have a little bit more uh, stretching. So you're doing not only just one stretch, or multiple stretching, right? And then you're learning about your body. Where is the comfortable position for my neck? What is good hand position? So it's all about exploring yourself. Okay, we're done with the side stretch. Now a little bit on the hip warming up here. And normally for the hip warming up, I would suggest to go on into a tabletop and then we get into cat cow, right? So, in this part, we are going to explore also our range of motion of our hip joint. So first get into tabletop position, all right? I'll just remove this block so you have a better view of what I'm doing. And you can see my fingers and my palms. So I'm spreading open my finger, right? My palms facing down, I can feel it. Knuckle is on the ground, right? And for now, my wrist is underneath my shoulder and my hip is underneath my, uh, my knee is underneath my hip, right? And feel that this is a flat surface, that's why they call it tabletop. And I'll just look forward here, all right? So as we inhale, we go into what we call a cow pose, right? So as you inhale, you will tilt your tailbone here. So as you tilt your tailbone, you bring the hip up, right? Facing up. And what's happening here at the lumbar? So your tummy is going down. So imagine as you inhale, you're filling your tummy area with your air. So that's why this will aid easier for your breathing. And what's happening on your chest and your upper shoulder? So it helps to open your shoulders. So normally I would probably roll my shoulder a little bit. And as I do this, I push further on, palms down, and then I look up. So it will help me to breathe better here. Right, chest open, chin up, inhale. And as I exhale, I'm gonna do exactly the opposite. So instead of chin up, exhale, I'll be the chin down on the ground, and I'll be closing the chest because I'll be expelling all the air out, right? So upper back is curved, and then I'll look at my navel. Navel is empty, contract the ab, and at the same time, I'm tucking my tailbone. So inhale, exhale. So really when you do cat cow, just really take your time and do it slow, one step at one step, or vertebrae by vertebrae in fact. So you can really feel your spine moving step by step. Once you're able to have this awareness and observe all of these movements, then you'll be able to just move at your own pace. So we're gonna take a couple of breaths in cat and cow. So enjoy your breathing in this. So I'll come back to you when we're done. Okay, so inhale. And exhale. 
Deep breath here. So inhale. One last deep breath here. Good. All right. Now, remember I said we're doing a bit of a hip joint movement here. So this time we're going to do a bit of what I call fire hydrant <laughs> so it almost looked like um, a dog peeing <laughs> so what you're going to do is that you're going to lift maybe your left knee first and then bring it to the side it does mimic like a dog peeing right so yes this is what we're going to do so bring it in and out in and out All right and as you do this try and imagine you're tucking your tailbone all right Find that balance. If you find that you're a bit wobbly, tuck your tailbone, engage your core, right? At the same time, if you feel strong, you can try and also engage your glutes and then slowly maybe your quarters up so you find that better stabilization. Try that, but bit by bit, all right? So back to tabletop, slowly inhale. You're gonna lift your left knee, bring it to the side. Find that engagement, feel your muscle engagement. Bring it back. Exhale, inhale up, exhale down. I'm gonna do a couple of this, maybe 20. Are you up for it? <laughs> right. So don't lose your count. You can do it fast. Some people like to do it really fast. I would always just come back and do it slower. So you'll be able to just track your range of motion and better um, muscle engagement, right? Yay. There's a, maybe about 15 more, okay? And connect it with your breathing. Every time you breathe in, breathe out. We're almost done. <laughs> I think about five more. <laughs> And that's it. All right, now switch side. I'm just gonna switch my side here. Okay. And then slowly as you inhale, lift your right knee and move up. So again, remember your muscle engagement. If you haven't been counting, I think by now it's five, so you have 15 more to go. It's not that long. It's gonna be fast. <laughs> two more, five more of this. Good, very nice. Well done, guys. Anytime in my class, if you feel tired, bring yourself to a child pose. So sometimes some people, they would like to test the limit, but anytime you feel like you need to chill and relax, go to child pose. So again, child pose, you have the option to separate the knees or maybe knees together. All right. So basically when you get in this pose, your hip will be on your heels. If you find this is a bit too much, remember we have our block. So you can always just place it underneath. And again, if you wish to separate or have it together, whichever is comfortable. And when you're ready, just bring your palms down. And if you're able to, you can just melt your chest towards the ground. You can spread your arms like a V shape. You can also extend it at the back and maybe for another variation if you like you can interlace your hands and then slowly just bring it up over your head. Breathe and breathe out. 
So if you're ready, you can slowly just bring yourself back up from the child pose. We're done with the hip movement here. So a little bit movement on our toes. So I'm gonna do a bit something tricky here. <laughs> um, so a little bit warming up on the toes, right? So try and imagine doing this. You're putting your fingertips in between your toe fingers. All right, so try that and just put one by one each. It's gonna be hard the first time because it's not something that you're used to. Even for me until now, I still find it a bit harder to put it in between. <laughs> but let's see. So in the end, it will look something like this. I know it's funny, I know. But yes, but this is for today's, uh, our warming up into the toes, right? Almost like pedicure. <laughs> All right, so once you have done this, what we're going to do, okay, if you're sitting like this, make sure that you're comfortable, your back is straight, open your chest, and uh, from here, slowly try and just squeeze, if you can. If it's too not bearable, forget about it. All right, I will show you another modification, what you can do. But just for today, I just want to like to just um, show something funny, <laughs> right? And then I'll just stretch open and then, yeah, it might be painful for some. I mean, for me, it's a little bit of pain, but it's kind of bearable pain. So if that's not accessible for you, then it's okay. You can just sit here into Dandasana or Star Pose, making sure that your back is straight. If you don't feel that the back is straight, put the palms to the back. Remember, push it, roll your shoulder and chest up. Now flex your feet, spread your toes open. So again, it looks like going to pedicure. And then squeeze them, spread them open, and squeeze them again. So find which option is okay for you. Some people like to explore. Some people, they know their limit and just like, I'll do this. So whichever choice is just okay. No problem at all. All right, so we've done warming up from head to toe, and I will introduce you to a few poses that next time when we do this, you'll be like, yes, I know how to do it correctly. All right, so posture number one is what we call ascending pose, or in Hatha Yoga, we call it Tadasana. So it looks like a normal standing posture, but if you break down on the technicality of it, there's a little bit more specification on that. I'm gonna stand up here, and then I'll show it to you. So I'm standing here on both of my feet. So choose the option. Maybe for some people they feel comfortable having their heels together. And for some, maybe they feel more better if they have about hip width distance apart, right? So as you're standing up here, I just need you to bring two fingers on each side. Bring it into your hip bone, you will feel here, right? Try to imagine your hip bone, it has um, a light on it, right? Like a bulb, right? So the bulb here, imagine if the bulb is facing down, the bulb is facing down. So your hip is having an anterior tilt. So we don't want that. We wanna bring it back into a neutral position. So you can imagine the bulb is looking forward, right? And sometimes for some people, the bulb is going up, looking up. So some people might have this posterior tilt. So we don't want that either. We're gonna correct the hip and just bring it into a neutral position, right? So please check the hip neutral position, all right? Now, as you have already identified your hip, making sure that on your feet, weight distribution is even. That means you don't feel any extra on your toes, you don't feel any extra on your um, heels, even distribution. Hands on the side, torso is long, spine is long, and your shoulder is relaxed. So if you feel tense, just slowly bring the shoulder down. Look forward, and that's your Tadasana. Okay, standing pose. Now, the other pose that you probably will hear a lot is what we call forward fold. So, forward fold is a position from Tadasana, then we will slowly have a micro bend on our knees, 
so you don't want to lock your knees. Right, from this position, you will try your best to put your fingertips on the floor, right? So for beginners, maybe they have shorter hamstring, right? Now, if you have this, this is okay to bend here and just go lower like this. Absolutely fine, okay? Right, making sure that your spine is, is lengthened. And be careful with your neck. Move it up and down just to find a suitable situation, um, location for the neck, right? So that's it. Uh, this is um, forward fold. In the future, bit by bit, you're gonna try and straighten your knee, but again, do not lock it. And in the future, then you'll be able to just access it better and do this. So you can also use the help of your um, blocks here and maybe place it like this. So as long as you get to have your chest closer to your thigh, have a micro bend, this is great too. Right? Okay, so that's full with full. There's a few variation here. Uh, maybe you can also just place both elbows like this and just put your head down, let it loose, right? Don't be move side to side. Maybe lift your heels, right? To just calm down the hamstring, the tight hamstring. So try that, right? That's forward fold. Now, might look the same, but this is what we call a half lift, right? So in half lift, still a micro band here, and you have the option to put your hands on your chin or above your knee. And uh, maybe if you like, you can also use your blocks on a high mode here, like this, it's fine. The idea is to, again, lengthen the spine and then look forward, or maybe just slightly down, as long as your neck feels comfortable. Okay, so just, I hope you're able to differentiate between a half lift and a forward fold. So basically, forward fold is a deeper stretch, okay? But probably the same concept, you want the lengthening of the spine and be careful with your neck, relax that. All right, next up is um, downward dog, the famous dog in yoga, all right? Or in Sanskrit, Adha Mukha Svanasana. <laughs> Forget about that, let's just concentrate on downward dog for the moment so it's easy to remember. Now, how do we get from downward dog? Now, first, spread your fingers, okay? Now, making sure that knuckles are on the ground. So again, like maybe for example from tabletop here, right? Imagine that, okay? You're gonna slowly tuck your toes here, right? Lift the knees, right? And then slowly move your hip up. Ooh, if you feel that it's a bit tight for you, then it's definitely okay to bend it. No problem at all. Okay, so for me, I'm just gonna place it. I always try to imagine not putting the hands too close, bring it a bit wider. So as you do it, you won't be locking your head or your neck, okay? So from here, put it down. Inhale, push your palms down. So the weight has to be lifted. Do not rest the weight on your wrist. Safety, always remember, number one, safety. So put it back. Spread up your fingers open. All right, inhale, lift your knees, bring your hip to the back. Good. If you feel this is a bit too tight, then stay here, All right? This is absolutely fine. Now from here, push more your palms down. Imagine your shoulder blade is separated. So it shouldn't be going together. Separate the shoulder blade, imagine that. Now, if you feel your neck is a bit funny here, Try and gaze, look into your navel and breathe here. Now, if you feel this is a bit boring or you feel like you're losing your concentration, slowly just walk your dog. So this is fine. Now, slowly, slowly, as you practice every day, you will help to uh, lengthen your hamstring and maybe even your calf. So you bend slowly, you'll be able to just put your Heels on the ground and slowly straighten the back. So breathe deeply here. So imagine here you're bringing your, your hip upwards, looking up, right? 
spread your fingers, feeling the knuckles on the mat. So normally in downward dog, we'll take about five deep breaths here in practice. So again, remember the ujjayi breathing. So if you feel it's too much, this is definitely okay. Walk your dog. And then if you want to come down, slowly just bend your knees, bring it down, move your torso forward, and get on the floor. And if you wish, you can slowly come back into child pose. Right? Okay, so I hope you understand now, downward dog, right? It is fine if you have bent knees, if your heels are lifted, absolutely okay, right? So for me, priority in downward dog, just the lengthening of the spine, okay? And yes, be careful with the neck, so try and look at the navel. So let's just do it one more time. Put the palms down on the floor, you're on tabletop. Tuck your toes, lift the knees up, inhale, push your hip to the back. And then slowly walk your dog. And if you feel comfortable, remember to push the palms down on the ground so you lift the weight up. And then slowly bring the heels down on the floor if you're able to do so. Gaze, look at your navel. Continue your ujjayi breathing. And then slowly release, bring your heels, lift it up. Move your torso to the front and bend your knees back down. Downward dog. Next one I'm going to show you is what we call cobra pose. Okay, so in cobra pose here, we go, go into a prone pose. So your tummy is down on the floor. Now, again, same concept, we want to lengthen the spine, right? So your toes is facing down, okay? And maybe your heels are outward like this, okay? Now, in the cobra pose, you need to know where you should be putting your palms. Where is your space? So for most people, maybe it's just above their shoulder, but try to keep your elbow close to your body. And then as you inhale, you're pushing your tummy down to lift yourself. Palms down, push it down, inhale. And then slowly lift your chest up, look forward. Before you take off, before you lift off, make sure that you have that lengthening effect first. Instead of just go up, right? You want to avoid that compression on the lower back. All right. So maybe for some people, they want to start first like this, their hand, and try to adjust how they feel like. If that feels funny, they can slowly bring into a sphinx pose. So your elbow is underneath your shoulder. Inhale, push the palms, and then see how they feel like here. And if you're ready, you can slowly just adjust above your shoulder next to your shoulder, and maybe for advance, close to your chest. So roll the shoulder to the back, bring the elbow close to the body. As you inhale, push the palms down, and lift yourself up. Cobra. All right. So maybe for beginners, they might feel tired in this pose, because your arms are still not having that muscle memory yet in this position. So I would suggest for a homework to do a bit of what I call a push-up cobra. So you can slowly exhale down, position yourself again, roll the shoulder, and then inhale, push the palm up. Maybe take five breaths or two breaths, and then slowly exhale back down. And then inhale, push. One more time, exhale down, inhale, push. So the option is yours, that's practice for Cobra. You need to know where is the position for your hands. You need to ensure that as you lift yourself up, you feel comfortable, you can talk there and uh, give yourself a break. Every time you feel tired, get back to child pose and then start again. So homework is definitely the push-up cobra. 
so that you'll be able to gain some muscle memory and the next time you do it you'll be having a good time instead of a suffering <laughs> phase right okay so downward dog we've done cobra is done and what we're going to do next is um, I'm going to show you two warrior poses here so I have what we call the warrior one and warrior two so warrior one first right so first let's get back into Tadasana position okay maybe we'll do a bit of a forward fold from here so inhale hands up and then slowly as you forward hold, fold hands into prayer bring your hands down on the floor and carefully as you inhale half lift extend your spine and then from here slowly I'm going to lift my right leg to the back all right so you're probably asking how much is the stance in between one feet to another probably around four or five feet the idea is to find that stability and a nice stretch also so from this side my left uh, foot is in front of me okay and the back foot maybe about 45 degrees if you feel okay so your back foot is also doing your back leg is doing external rotation now from here you're going to carefully just bend the front knee right and as you bend making sure that the knee is supported by the ankle so sometimes it's like 90 degrees so try and avoid overshooting or undershooting so the knee is just nice on the ankle for support okay and what about your hands where should i put this so slowly you can just inhale and lift your hands up into the air if you feel the neck is a bit too tight just make it like a v or alternatively you just can put it on the side or if you want remember cactus you can put it on a cactus so you're in warrior one i'm going to slowly just show you on the other side so again from tadasana from tadasana here inhale lift and carefully as i exhale my hand on prayer mode and then i'm going to put my fingertips on the ground and then slowly as i inhale half lift lengthening my spine and again i'm going to lift my right leg and then bring it to the back maybe four or five feet whichever feels comfortable so the front is looking 90 degrees forward and then the back may be 45 and from here i'm going to bend my front knee 90 degrees for support and again my hand I have the option if I want to go up if I feel too tight V maybe on the side and if I want also I can cactus all right so people will ask how do I put my how is my tilting of my hip bone here so for me I would actually like to engage a bit of my core so I'm tucking my tailbone a little bit so I feel the activation so as I do that I'm tucking my tailbone engaging my core my quadricep and also my uh, hamstring here I feel the engagement so the choice is yours which one do you want to activate okay so that's warrior one and then let's just do on the other side practice on the other side switch side so making sure that your form is good find that stability so play around with the distance as well so if you put a shorter one and bend so for me I don't really feel that much here I would prefer a deeper stretch so I will go like this so the choice is yours all right now moving on the transition now from warrior one right so your hands is up so in warrior two you're going to slowly just spin your back foot a little bit wider and for me I like it longer the stance as well so it's bent still having that outer rotation on your back leg and have my hands extend out like this right and I look forward at the front hand maybe at my middle fingertip good so this is transition to warrior one to warrior two I'm going to show on the other leg right now so now it's a right leg forward and in warrior one and from here I'm going to spin myself to warrior two so you can see the back leg I'm widening it the stance and I'm into warrior two so I'm looking forward that's 
for you to get. Right, so I think for today I'm able to teach you a little bit step by step on what is really important. So the next time I cue you in Downward Dog, Cobra, Warrior One, Warrior Two, and also when it comes to forward fold, half lift, and tadasana. These are basic movement for beginners. So I hope that helps. And uh, if you have any questions for me at any time, you'll always feel free to ask. No problem at all. And practice safely, right? Now, before we move on to finish the class, traditionally, um, and even now in practice, yoga practice, we will Pull down in Savasana. So you have the option here to take your Savasana. If you do have props with you, for example, if you have this, then this is perfect. You'll be able to place it one for your head. And if you feel like you want to open your chest, right? If you have this, um, depends also if you feel you're okay using the lowest or highest, you can place it at the back of um, here, basically. So if I'm using the highest mode, then I will just put it in between my shoulder blade. So about this range. But if I feel this is a bit too much for me, then I'll just move on to a flat one. So I'm just gonna display to you how I'm gonna use it with blocks in taking my Shavasana or corpse pose. So making sure that the leg is spread and then your toes are on uh, outer rotation here. And then carefully just place down your elbow carefully as you move. Find that location in between your shoulder blade to support by the block. And have the head also support by the block. And spread your arms and fingers and also your hands facing up, palms facing up. So when you're in Shavasana, you should feel very light. So release any tension on your neck. Just let it go. And try and also close your eyes. So choose which option you have. So if you have the blocks, do as what I'm doing right now. But if you don't, you can always just take away the block and then just lie down on your mat or on any comfortable mm, carpet will be okay. Towel is fine too. As long as you feel comfortable and just let go of all tension on your body. So we're gonna take about five, six minutes of Savasana. Try your best to just let go of any tension from your head to your neck. Let go of any tension on your shoulders, your wrist, your fingers, your torso.
if something come across into your mind, try and just push your thoughts away. Bring yourself to a state of relaxation. Remove your fingertips, maybe from the pinky finger, your ring finger, your middle finger, your index finger, and your toes. Roll the toes and your feet. Slowly bring them back your awareness to where you are. And when you're ready, just roll to one side. Closing your eyes, still breathing deep, steady breath. Carefully use one palm and then just push it on the ground to lift yourself away from the ground. Find yourself in a sitting position, making sure that your hip bones are on the ground. Your torso is long, your neck is relaxed, your shoulder relaxed. Bring your palms together onto a prayer pose. And carefully just try and create some friction in between your palms, generating some heat, and then slowly place it on your eyes, still breathing. One more time, placing both palms together, creating some friction. And as you develop that heat, place it on your eyes. Breathe. Still closing your eyes, bring both palms onto in front of your chest into a prayer pose or Anjali Mudra. Relax your facial expression, your facial muscle. Slowly have a gentle smile on your face and open your eyes gently. Namaste. Thank you for joining the class today. I'll see you next time in class. Take care.